Hey guys, it's Love Saloon here, and today I will be showing you this super, super cute slip heart bracelet. This bracelet was created by pretty underscore n underscore rainbow on Instagram. Um, she DM'd me the picture of this to show me how cute it was, and I asked if I could do a tutorial because I think it's absolutely adorable. So thank you so much for creating this pretty and rainbow. I think you did an awesome job on it. Please check her out and give her a follow for me, and I will have her uh, profile pic in this video as well. So definitely check her out. Um, this bracelet takes approximately 75 bands to make. And um, of course, that depends on your wrist size. Um, I have three different displays here. I just did a little tiny one here with uh, regular opaque bands and black border. This one is all silicone bands. And then this one is jelly bands in the middle with regular opaque bands for the border. Um, Pretty and Rainbow does recommend that the jelly bands stay the best. Uh, we do want to forewarn you, you do not want to pull on your bracelet um, like we normally do because it will pull the slip knot effect out. So be very gentle when pulling on it. You don't want to give it a big tug. You will regret it. <laughs> um, so without wasting your time any further, let's go ahead and get started. To make this bracelet, you need one loom, one C-clip, and your hook. Um, I will be working with the four pins right here in the shape of a T. So we'll lay vertical and horizontal bands. Um, I was actually shown this by Pretty and Rainbow like this laying the vertical bands there and then the horizontal there. Um, but I just felt like it was a little easier to do it on this angle so the bracelet can squeeze between there because it does curl up. All right, so I will be using gold jelly, red jelly, and white today. Um, she does recommend using jelly bands as it does hold the slip knots a little better. So to get started, I'm going to grab one of my color bands, which I'm going to start with red jelly, and we're going to lay a vertical band just going forward. One single band like so. And then we're going to grab a border band, which I'm going to use white, and we're going to lay that horizontal crossing it so it makes that T shape. The very first step is we're going to grab the bottom band here and cross it over the white and connect it to the top pin here. So just grab that band, stretch it forward, and reapply. Now we need to do like a cross back technique, and I do believe Jordan Team 1 was the first one to ever use this technique. From the outside, we need to grab the bottom band on that gel red jelly, and we're going to bring it over the pin, and just you're just swinging it back and reapplying it to this bottom pin here. Push that down, and we're going to add on another layer. Now going forward from here, we're going to be laying our border band first. The first time we did it the opposite way just for the beginning, but now we will always add on our white border band first, which will be laid horizontal like so. And now we will lay our colored middle band. So lay the colored one going forward. Now we need to bring the bottom layer up on the colored ones only. But it's very important that you do the back side first and then the bottom side or front, however you want to refer to it. So at this top one, grab the bottom band, which is red, and just bring it up and over. And then grab the bottom band down here and bring it up and over. Now we need to do that cross back technique again. Um, and the reason it was important to always bring the bottom band up and over starting back here is because of the tension it creates when we do this cross back again. So grab the gold band and you're going to bring it forward, reapply it, and now we need to grab the bottom of the gold, take it off of the pin, and bring it back and reapply it. And by, by doing the um, top first, it created that tension which actually made it the slip knot even. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you take it off of the loom because we may have to fix some of the knots. Some may be pulled a little tighter than others, but I have found that doing it that way creates the best knot. Now we can loop the sides. So bring the bottom band up and over on your sides. There should only be two bands. Once you bring the sides over, there will only be one. And don't worry if one side's a little looser because that does fix itself. Just kind of push it down out of the way. 
And now we're going to do that process all over again. So grab your border band, lay it horizontally, grab your color band, and lay it vertically, like so. So now we need to bring up the bottom layer again. So remember, you always want to start at the top. Grab the bottom band, which is gold, and bring it up. And do the same on the bottom. Now we're going to grab the red, bringing it forward. And now grab that bottom band up, up there, bringing it up and over the pin, and swinging it back down here. Reapply it to the pin. And now we can remove the bottom band on our sides. So basically that was another process and we're going to start that process again. Um, every time you need to start your process over, you have to start with your border band, lay it like so. And now I'm going to lay my gold color band. Just make sure you have that not crisscross. You always want that top layer being on top. So now grab the bottom band, bring it up and over. Same on the bottom. Now we're going to cross it over again. So grab your gold, bringing it forward. Grab the bottom band from the outside and bring it back. Like so. And now you can loop the bottom band on your border. It's important that you do not pull too hard on your bracelet. Normally we always like to tug and pull as it starts growing out, but for this design, you want to do it very gently, if not even at all, because if you pull too hard, it almost pulls that slip knot look out. It, it, it can be fixed if you do it, but I just recommend not pulling hard on it at all, and then you don't have to worry about that. Um, so we're going to start again. So I'm going to lay my horizontal band like so, and now laying my vertical color band. Now that we've made our T effect, we're going to remove the bottom band, starting at the top always. Remove the bottom band from the bottom. And now we're going to grab the red bottom band and bring it forward. Now we're going to grab the bottom band up here and bring it back down. Now you can loop your border band again. We're just going to continue this pattern, laying our border band and then our color band in the middle, looping the bottom band up and over, grabbing the bottom and bringing it forward, and then grabbing that bottom band from the outside, bringing it up and pulling it back. Loop up your sides. And once you do it a few times, it does get pretty easy. Um, as it starts to grow, the bracelet does tend to curl up and get kind of stuck in there. So very gently, I just kind of use my finger or your hook and just push it down in between the pins so it kind of gets stuck in there like so. And then you can just keep pushing it down. I would not pull too hard on it that way, like I said. So I'm just going to continue doing this so you guys can just follow along.
Gonna do it two more times. Remember, you always wanna start at the top and bring in the bottom up and over. And since this is the last time I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna explain it one more time. So we're gonna grab our border band, lay that horizontally across. Grab your color middle band and lay that straight vertically, creating your T effect. Then we're gonna remove the bottom layer, always starting at the top. And then you're gonna grab that band at the bottom. You're gonna just bring it forward. And then from the outside, you're gonna grab that very bottom band, swinging it over that pin and bringing it back, reapplying it to the bottom. And then you can remove the bottom band on the left and right side for your border bands. It will continue to grow at the bottom. You can gently just ease it through. Don't pull on it too much. You will start to see your slip knot effect on the back side. Some of them may get a little bit tucked in and we can fix that at the end. Um, but the way that I'm showing you to loop the bottom bands should create the most even effect. Um, so go ahead and continue making it. I will finish up the length of my bracelet and I'll come back and show you how to close it up. Please watch the previous instructions if you have any problems. I'll be right back. Alrighty guys, so I finished the length of my bracelet. So now I'm going to show you how to close it up. Basically the last uh, step that you would have done was to loop your border bands. This band should already be crossed back and looped. So it should look just like this. One single band on all four of your pins. What we're going to do is you're gonna grab whatever color you're using for your border and we're gonna lay that horizontal band again just like you would be starting another layer and then instead of laying a color band in the middle this time you're gonna grab the same color as your border which is white for me and we're gonna lay that going vertical so instead of your color band we're gonna use our border band making that T effect and we're going to bring the bottom layer up and over on all four pins. So just like we did before, I'm just going to start at the back here. Bring the red up and over and then bring the red up and over on the bottom. And now we're going to do the same for the sides. We're not going to cross that back or anything. We're just going to bring the bottoms up on our border uh, side bands. So now we're back to having one layer on all of our bands. Just move that out of the way. Um, and this was a little tricky for me to actually close. I mean, it was easy because it was only a little bit of bands, but it was twisting the way that the bands were like closing. So this is the easiest way I came up with. So hopefully it's easy for you guys too, or hopefully you like it. But anyway, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna bring them all up to one pin. Just move this out of the way. Okay, sorry about that. So we're going to bring the left and right side up to this top middle band. So grab the left side and stretch that up to the middle. Grab the bot or the right side and stretch that up to the middle. And now grab the bottom, but kind of hold on to your bracelet. You don't want it popping off and carefully remove that and bring that up to the middle. So now we have all four bands on that pin up here and you can go ahead and just attach your C-clip onto these four bands if you'd like. If you feel that it's gonna be too much on your C-clip, you can grab another border color band Again, first I want to say you can attach a C-clip there. That's what I've done, but I want to try it like this too. So grab one white band, attach it to one side of your hook, and just slide it up through all of those bands. Reattach the other side to your hook. And now we have just two bands that we can attach our C-clip to. So I did pop that off of the loom. And we just have two bands here, so I'm just gonna shimmy my finger in there. 
and pop on the C-clip to these two bands. Like so. It's just less um, bands that you got to worry about getting, you know, on your hook. So the reason I did that was because if I didn't do that, um, see how I have it coming straight now? Otherwise, the C-clip would have been like this if I kept with the pattern, which we don't want because when we hook to this side, we want our C-clip being straight like that. So coming down to this end, you have two white bands down here at the very beginning. You're just going to slip your hook in there like so, grabbing those two white bands. And that's where we're going to attach the other side of your C-clip. Like so. And did I, oh, I made it twisted, sorry. You definitely want to make sure that your bracelet is not twisted. <laughs> make sure it is all on the same side when you go to close it. Like so. So now it won't twist when it's on your wrist and it lays perfect. So there you have... Let me zoom up here, or zoom out. There you have the completed slip heart bracelet. I think this is so cute. I'm just trying to get some focus here, and there we go. Um, this was created by pretty underscore and underscore rainbow. She sent me this on Instagram um, just to show me what it looked like, and then I asked if I could do a tutorial for her because I just thought it was super duper cute. Um, so looking at your bracelet, if you do see... Um, any of your slip knots like tucked in at all or sometimes um, some of the bands are sticking out more than others you can use your fingers and just kind of pull up on them like this like that um, or you can use your hook and sometimes the tops like this gold one here is kind of tucked in so just gently grab your hook and just kind of Pull up on it a little bit like that. So if you did follow my directions, and I did that a little too much, so now I'm just going to pull on it a little bit. But you don't want to pull too much because then the slip knot will completely disappear and then you have to refix it all. Um, but if you did follow my instructions on the looping process, they should have came out pretty even. Um, but it is pretty simple to fix if not. So... There you have it, and I actually even like this side. I know it's super plain, but I think it's cute. Like, I would totally wear that side. So, it is technically reversible in my book if you like that look. So, yeah, um, definitely check out pretty underscore n underscore rainbow on Instagram. Tag her as well as myself, which is loves to loom on Instagram. We'd love to see your creations. And please hit the big like button below if you haven't done so already, as well as the subscribe button. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you like this bracelet and we will see you or I will see you at my next video. Bye.